Technological Literacy for Seniors, a two-part video series intended to help seniors understand commonly used technologies, become aware of the risks those technologies may face, and increase their overall safety and privacy online. Using technology safely is the second video in the two-part series. Now that you have an understanding of how technologies work from a technical perspective, you will be able to understand their potential risks. While the purpose of this video is to help you become aware of the risks you may face when using technology, you should not become fearful of using it. For each risk, a solution will be presented so that you can continue using technology safely and securely. We'll begin with explaining the common risks of using the internet and the web. The first risk is domain name system spoofing or DNS spoofing. A DNS attack happens when an attacker introduces fake data into the DNS to cause the server to return an incorrect IP address. The DNS is like the phone book of the internet. It holds all the IP addresses of the web pages. For review, an IP address is a special formatted ad address that every device connected to the internet must have. When an attacker introduces fake data into the DNS, they are able to make the server return an incorrect IP address, which results in the victim being redirected to a malicious web page without their knowledge. The malicious web page can be designed to imitate the web page the victim first intended to visit, and therefore can be used to trick the vict victim into giving away personal information. A solution? To keep yourself safe from DNS spoofing attacks, once you've been directed to a web page, make sure the browser has a padlock symbol located in the left of the search engine. A padlock means that your web page is secure and not an imitation. Additionally, double check the URL address of the web page in your browser to ensure that it looks reliable. A trusted website will have a correctly spelled URL that looks something like https slash slash yourwebsite.com. If the URL is misspelled or includes random characters, close your browser and try searching for the web page again. Risk two, man in the middle or MITM. An MITM attack happens when an attacker compromises a router and eavesdrops on the information being sent between a computer and a server through the internet. For review, a router receives electrical signals from your devices and passes them onto the modem, which then connects you to the internet. By compromising the router, the attacker has the ability to intercept the packets of information in order to spy on the victim. The victim is unaware that the attacker is in the middle of their connection so they may be at risk for having their personal information stolen. A solution? To keep yourself safe from MITM attacks, only visit web pages that use Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, or HTTPS for short. You can easily check if a web page uses HTTPS by looking at the start of your URL. If it begins with HTTPS colon slash slash, you know it's safe to use. You can also check for HTTPS by looking for the padlock symbol located in the left of the search engine. Be careful not to confuse this with HTTP, which is an insecure transfer protocol. HTTPS helps to keep you safe because it is a protocol used to send information between a web browser and a web page that requires all information to be encrypted. Encryption is a process of converting plain text to illegible characters using code. Before encryption, a packet of information may look legible, like using technology safely. But after encryption, a packet of information may look like an illegible jumble of characters, numbers, and symbols. HTTPS helps to keep you secure because once your data is encrypted, attackers will not be able to understand the stolen information. Risk three, pop-up ads. 
Pop-up ads are advertisements that are displayed in a small new browser window. They typically contain a statement designed to capture your attention and create a sense of urgency. The goal of a pop-up ad is to get the user to click on the window and visit the web page. An attacker can use a pop-up ad in several ways to create an attack. One way is by creating a pop-up ad that looks reliable in order to trick the user into visiting the site and giving up their personal information. This attack does not result in a virus being transported to the computer, but can result in identity theft or other privacy threats. Another way is by simply getting the user to click on the ad. By clicking on the ad, the attacker is able to infect the device with malware. Malware is a form of software that is designed to harm or exploit a device. It's sometimes also called a virus. Solution. The best way to keep yourself safe from potential pop-up ad attacks is to download an ad blocker. An ad blocker is a browser plugin that attaches to your browser and scans web pages and removes all advertising before you visit it. You can download a trusted ad blocker by searching ad blocker plus the name of your web browser in the search engine. For example, Firefox plus ad blocker. Additionally, whenever you are faced with a pop-up ad, make sure not to click on the window. Carefully press the X button in the top right corner and consider not visiting that web page again. Now we'll introduce some of the risks of using phones and laptops. Risk number one, computer malware. Malware is a malicious software that is unknowingly downloaded or installed. If a computer is infected with malware, it may run slow, randomly reboot, or run unknown and unwanted processes. A virus is a type of malware, but other types can include key loggers, which track your keystrokes to steal sensitive data, and Trojan horses, which are programs that live in legitimate software and are used to spy and steal sensitive information. A malware attack can come from many different sources, but about 92% of malware is delivered through attachments and spam emails. Solutions. There are several ways to keep yourself safe from malware attacks. One way is to install an anti-malware software on your computer. Anti-malware software helps to keep you safe from malware attacks by scanning programs and files as they enter your device and comparing them to known malware. The software also performs scheduled scans scans on your computer to detect and remove any malware that may exist. Some common and reputable anti-malware software include Norton and McAfee. Another way to keep yourself safe is to set up a firewall. A firewall is a network security device that monitors incoming and outgoing traffic on the internet. A firewall helps to keep you safe from malware by establishing a barrier between your internal network and the potentially malicious incoming traffic from the internet. Most computers come with a firewall installed and only require activation, which can be done through advanced settings on the device. Lastly, you can keep yourself safe from malware attacks by making sure your computer software is up to date. If your computer is running on outdated software, it may be more vulnerable to malware attacks. Make sure to allow your computer to install automatic software updates in order to keep the software on the newest and most secure version. Phones, risks of phones. Phone malware. Phones are at much lower risk for malware attacks than computers. A malware attack on a phone typically results from downloading an app that contains malicious software. If a phone is infected with a malware, it may run slow, randomly reboot, or run unknown and unwanted processes. Luckily, phones are generally at low risk for malware attacks. This is because Apple and Google both inspect all apps for malicious software before they are allowed to be offered in the App Store. You can protect yourself from malware attacks on your phone by only downloading apps from trusted app stores. For iPhones, this is the Apple Store, and for Androids, this is the Google Play Store. Finally, general privacy concerns. There can be several privacy risks related 
when using technologies like stolen identity, information, or passwords. These can lead to many different harms from identity theft to simply a general feeling of being unprotected. Solutions. To increase your general privacy and security while using phones and computers, you should leverage the built-in security features on the devices. For both phones and laptops, you should use passwords to protect your devices from unwanted entry. These passwords should not be easily guessed. For example, password. Or include information about yourself, like your first name, last name, or potential children's names. A strong password uses both characters, of lowercase and uppercase, numbers, and symbols. Additionally, you should not reuse passwords for different devices because this increases the, risk, the, increases the risk of entry if an attacker gains a password. Some newer phones and laptops also include biometric security measures, which allow you to unlock your device with a fingerprint or facial ID. These are the safest ways to lock your device since they cannot be replicated. Now you have an understanding of the common risks that technologies face and how to protect yourself against them. This was not an exhaustive list, but you should be confident that you have the knowledge and tools to use technology safely. While some of these risks may have seemed daunting, there is no reason to fear technology. You can learn to embrace it while still practicing reasonable precautions. Thanks for watching.